Madam Chair, and, and I am, and I appreciate you going first. I can try to collect my thoughts, but I don't think I have effectively done that, and I'm going to prove that point right now. Um, I mean, I think we heard every conceivable point of view and perspective that possibly could be offered on the subject matter of nuclear energy, nuclear power, seismic safety, uh, the fate and future of our planet, our capacity to deliver on our promotion and promises of renewables in a safe, reliable way, the different ideological perspectives of just vehemence against nuclear, the ideological perspective that it is the solution, uh, and the like. Um, we started this process publicly, at least, in, uh, in December of last year. Uh, and there were some public statements that were made by the commission. I made some that my sense was, and good people can disagree with this, that this plant was inevitably going to be shut down uh, for various reasons. That was my sense. I could be wrong, but that was my sense of looking at the tea leaves, looking at the regulatory environment out there, looking at all the various agencies that, uh, that PG&E and others need to check off over the course of the next few years, state, local, federal agencies and the like. And that if that were the case, uh, let us not make the mistakes we made at San Onofre. Let's not fail to plan. Let's have a conversation now about what that means to the workforce, what that means to community, what that means to our efforts to provide alternative energy sources uh, at a competitive price. And that was the discussion that unfolded over the course of the next few months. Yes, many private meetings, God forbid. Uh, welcome to my office anytime to have those. Uh, I had dozens of them with lots of you. Folks from the environmental community, folks from PG, you name it, they, everyone seemed to attach themselves to these conversations. No secrets here, no one hiding here. Hardly negotiations, but conversations, important conversations about can we deliver on a bridge uh, on these renewables. I mean, I have that legitimate question as well. Can we do it? it? Can that be done in 10 years? Some folks said, no, it absolutely could be done in a few months. I mean, I, I'm not kidding. I had folks saying there, oh, we could do it today. Um, uh, you know, okay. And they said, I've got here, look at that. I've got a book I wrote, not just the books here that prove it. I mean, I had folks, a lot of smart folks out there that certain points of view and sort of the point of the chair that we, you know, we have to unpack all these things. We had a public meeting again, public meeting again. Not many folks showed up in February, but they were invited. We had another public meeting in April. We encouraged folks, not many folks showed up to be invited in, in order to get feedback, in order to engage. Um, and then when we got closer to this date, there was some more vigor in terms of those meetings that were being held. Uh, we made great progress with labor. That was, to me, a foundational issue. That's what we expressed in December. We want to take care of our workforce. They matter. And you, you brought that home to me, with all those kids that showed up. And reminded me it's not just about the individuals that are employed, it's about their families. And you did that again today. I had folks out there, um, you know, a former mayor of San Francisco, trust me, seismic issues are front and center in terms of my consciousness, out there regaling me with all the latest evidence on all these new seismic concerns, you know, that are not insignificant concerns. I mean, this is not the preeminent site if you're not, if you're concerned about, rather, if you are concerned about seismic safety. Um, and then we started having the environmental conversations. Um, no one's hiding anything. No one's trying to you know, people were just trying in good faith to see if we can make this thing happen and try to bring people together. Um, and then the deal was announced, a, a deal that on the surface was unbelievably well received. I mean, Bernie Sanders himself tweeted, this is a model for the nation. Some of the most prominent progressives celebrating this deal, not just, you know, hard-headed conservatives. Uh, you know, it was a cross-section of folks that, that thought this, you know, had some merits. But then we come back to the question at hand here today. 
and what is our scope? I mean, I think there's a bit of a mythology that the State Lands Commission could determine uh, the fate and future of this plan. We're not being asked to shut it down today, nor do we have the power to do that. Even if we have the power to indulge in an environmental review, I, I thought an interesting comment, environmental reviews are used usually to delay things, not necessarily fast track thing. I thought that was an interesting comment from representatives of the Bay Area Council. Because one thing I know intimately is these environmental reviews never go as fast and as cleanly as you expect. There'll be folks litigating these things and relitigating them, and these things could last forever. Meanwhile, we're not having this kind of collaboration that I think we have the opportunity to have that was presented here today. Look, I'm long-windedly expressing a, a process here of consideration and sort of getting to the, the point at hand. San Onofre was a disaster. It increased wholesale energy costs. It hurt working folks. It hurt the economy. And it increased greenhouse gas emission. All objective facts. Germany has been a disaster. Shutting down eight nuclear plants precipitously. They've increased their greenhouse gas emissions. They bought more coal. They're over 50% in their electrical portfolio with coal. That's not a solution either. So I'm not ideologically opposed to nuclear. I, I'm good friends with Stuart Brand. He sat me there in Sausalito regaling me about the merits uh, of nuclear. But I'm just trying to do my best here as a member of this commission to try to process this in a, in a way that can service the community, service labor, and service the environment. And, and I, think, um, I think our staff, and this is my final point, has done a a very good job. And, and I, I, I get a little defensive, and it's not because we're part of the establishment or something, you know, all that stuff. You know, I admire this staff. It's one of the best environmental staffs in the country. And uh, you know, I, I rely on them. And, uh, and I honor them and respect their integrity. And uh, they've guided us through with some thoughts on this that, that like the chair, um, I'm inclined to support. And I appreciate, Jennifer, your willingness to hold the parties accountable to the promises, because I, I heard that expressed through public comment that there's a lot of mistrust out there, and, and we have the opportunity to do that because we have a trigger on this lease that says, if you're not following through on all these things, this lease expires, it terminates, which should be a celebration for those folks that are opposed. Uh, that's not even conditional on an environmental review, by the way. That's just termination if a lot of things don't occur. That's actually even more potent and powerful than an environmental review that actually has limited scope, not as broad as I think some people suggest. So I, I just want to say I, 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 uh, I appreciate the work of the, the staff. I appreciate the comments of the chair and her hard work on this. Um, I admire labor willing to step into this debate. Um, because I know how difficult it is for the workforce down there. I admire the public testimony about the impact in the community around schools and public safety and how we have to be cognizant of that. And it's the old plan, you know, old adage, right? If you, if you fail to plan, you're planning on fail. And, uh, and I think this will provide a bridge where that San Onofre was a ditch. And, and we have the opportunity to hold folks accountable and, and do something I think that at the end of the day we can all be proud of. Uh, but please, folks, don't, don't accuse this commission of, you know, it's on your watch and you won't be able to sleep at night. That, that kind of rhetoric, that, that just, that's, a divis that's divisive rhetoric. These are, these are weighty topics, but that kind of threat, that doesn't do you, actually, you, you lose a lot in that. I think some of those folks, you're, you're better than that. Uh, we take this very, very seriously. And, uh, and I know you do too, and I wish we can present our points of view in a, I think a more enlivening manner, particularly with the kids that are presented here. They, they're looking for a little better example than that. So with that, um, I'm uh, going to be supportive as well with appreciation of your point of view around uh, our water boards doing what they're supposed to be doing um, and, uh, and support the recommendation from staff um, and, uh, and move this on unless you have some compelling arguments that would disrupt this point of view and undermine it. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Ortega. I do not. I do not. <laughs> I am also in support of the staff's recommendation. Well, that was too easy. Um, 
So with that, I, I would officially move, Madam Chair, um, the item and staff recommendation. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Newsom to adopt the staff recommendation. Second. Second by Commissioner Ortega without objection. Such will be the order. Thank you. Thank you all.